So what is the most easterly part of London? Well, what if I were to tell you you're looking at it? Okay, so first things first, I'll start by addressing the obvious. The definition of London in geographic terms has changed much over the centuries. The major changes took place from around the aftermath of the Great Fire of 1666 to, well, the 1st of April 1965. Rather specific, I know, but allow me to explain. So, the expansion of London began in earnest in the 17th century in areas like Soho and St. James, then the 18th century with Mayfair and Marylebone, among others, then the 19th century with Belgravia, Kensington, Chelsea, and so on and so forth. Amidst the copious Victorian red brick development in the empty spaces, historic towns like Greenwich and Barnet were one by one picked off and added to the growing capital. Eventually, it got to the point where concern over this seemingly never-ending ballooning led to the creation of the Metropolitan Greenbelt. The idea was, and is, simple. Areas of land are designated where no urban development is permitted, and it's these grassy areas that effectively form the boundary of the London of today, or in technical terms, Greater London, which was established in April 1965. With the exception of the City of London, aka the Square Mile, the terms London and Greater London are otherwise like for like, though the latter is often used casually to imply the outer parts of London. For the benefit of anyone watching outside of the UK, the M25 is a famous orbital motorway that roughly encircles London. One common misconception is that the M25 is the border of London itself, but this is wrong on two counts. Firstly, there are plenty of areas within the M25 that are outside of London, such as Watford, Dartford, Epsom and so forth. Secondly, there is one anomaly where the opposite is true, one area of London that stands outside of the M25, which is where I finally get to the point. Situated 21 miles east of the centre of London, the centre being generally accepted to be Charing Cross, is the area known as North Ockenden, and this is the farthest from the centre you can go without leaving London. It's also the farthest removed from the capital in the figurative sense as well, as a brief tour will reveal. So what's to be found in North Ockenden, you might ask? Well, the most notable building has to be the Grade 1 listed medieval Church of St Mary Magdalene, one of the few places where the sound of church bells and the distant hum of the M25 go hand in hand. Then there's a pub, or at least there was a pub, namely the Old White Horse, but that appears to have sadly closed since about 2022. Likely another consequence of protecting essential workers by trashing the hospitality industry, but I digress. In terms of transport, the nearest railway station is about a mile and a half away, although it is served by the 370 bus between Romford and Lakeside Shopping Centre. In fact, the red buses are one of the few reminders that you are, in fact, in London, although it should be mentioned in the same breath that red buses occasionally leave the capital, Slough and Staines being two such instances. As for shops, well, there are none. Actually, no, there is a garden centre, which counts, I suppose. But don't get me wrong, North Ockenden is an affluent area. Houses on average sold here for over half a million pounds last year. And the houses in question are immaculately kept, although I didn't film them for privacy reasons, but you have my word on that one. The implication is that residents will typically drive or get a bus to the neighbouring settlements for shopping, work and so on. Which brings us to the question, what are the neighbouring settlements? Well, about a mile to the south is the intuitively named South Ockenden. But here's another quirk. South Ockenden is in Essex. Now, granted, a lot of people from East London identify as being from Essex anyway. Romford springs to mind. But South Ockenden is undisputedly part of Essex. Being just a mile apart, you might think you could walk between the two Ockendens, but a distinct lack of pavements plus a hefty thoroughfare of traffic headed for Lakeside Shopping Centre means that the 370 bus is the safer bet. 
House prices in South Ockenden are about £200,000 cheaper than its northern counterpart. Whether this is the London effect or something else relating to social issues, I couldn't say for sure. Then to the north of North Ockenden, about six miles away, you have Brentwood, an Essex town oozing with history, in particular as it was the birthplace of the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, when the legendary figure known as Watt Tyler led an uprising against feudal oppression. To the west, you have, of course, the M25, and then Upminster, a town perhaps most famous for being the eastern terminus of the district line on London Underground. And finally, supposing you travel east of London's easternmost settlement, what will you find? Well, firstly, a very pleasant rural walk that's particularly light on traffic. The easternmost point in London looks a little something like this, assuming the geography or the signage is gospel. Thurrock, by the way, is the name of the borough of Essex that borders London here. But as you finally escape from the city, like a chilled-out snake Pliskin, your next settlement is the Essex village of Bolvan. After being greeted by some of the local fauna, you'll come across the Church of St Mary the Virgin, which is largely 15th century, and just like its North Ockenden counterpart seen earlier, is Grade 1 listed. Then there's the Village Hall, built in the 1960s. A great decade for music, but not so much for architecture, and even a local store. And that's the extent of it. A far cry from the next major settlement to the east, which is... Basildon. So, Basildon is a product of the New Towns Act of 1946 that sought to rehouse those whose homes had been destroyed during the Blitz, alongside others like Harlow, Stevenage, Milton Keynes, Crawley and so on. The New Towns Act also provided a workaround for the problem of accommodating a growing population working in the capital without infringing on the green belt. And thus we have satellite towns, often with six-figure populations, as is the case here. And say what you will about Basildon, it did give the world Depeche Mode. All this to say that North Ockenden, a tiny village resembling more of a hamlet, if you ignore the church, lying outside of the M25 and seemingly lodged within Greenbelt land, is, by a bizarre twist of fate, London's most easterly area. And for all the cliched blog posts about hidden London, as if Neil's Yard is only accessible by a series of underground tunnels or something, you won't find much more hidden London than North Ockenden. Thanks for watching and have a great day.